Who has more drunks? Poor people, middle class people, or the wealthy people? There's really no answer. Alcohol does not discriminate against anybody. Once it gets into your life, poor, middle, or high, you're screwed. I put up a community post. I had you ask me questions about sobriety. Let's get into it. Alcohol does not discriminate. Once it gets a hold of you, your life can become shambles. You can be as wealthy as possible. As soon as you let alcohol take over your life, get into your mind and body, it starts breaking you down and breaking you down. You lose your business, you lose your friends, you lose your family, and then it's just you and yourself. That is a lonely life. You were up at the top and you let something so poisonous destroy you and take everything away from you. Is that what you want for your life? I have looked up statistics and it doesn't matter what socioeconomic class you are a part of, once it gets a part of you, it destroys you. Doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, where you are at in life, it breaks you and it destroys you. Alcohol doesn't care if you're poor. Alcohol doesn't care if you're rich. Alcohol cares that it gets into your brain and breaks you in half and completely takes over your life. In my opinion, alcohol is here to keep you lazy, sick, fat, and poor. So don't worry about which category you are in life, just strive for personal excellence. I would focus on getting sober, staying sober, and breaking those chains that alcohol has on you. This is Dixie, she, you know, she has no anxiety. She is just a love bug. And if you're having a bad day, she will snuggle you. What do you do for a living? Knowing this will help me understand if we can relate. I am a department head for one of the largest hotel chains in the world and currently at one of the largest convention hotels in the country. I drink to get through it and nearly every manager supports it and drinks with you, even on the job. During the shift, just to get through the BS, people suck and guests suck. Hotels are one of the most difficult and demanding fields. What do you do? I've had a lot of career fields. Being a mom, a stay-at-home mom, I'm going to say is one of the toughest jobs I've ever had. And you know what, I might get a lot of flack for that, but I also know a lot of moms that will relate with me and tell me that it is one of the hardest jobs because when it is solely just your job and you start feeling like you don't have a purpose for anything else out there, you see all these other moms and they get together kind of like this. All the managers are drinking together. You know, it's all this like corporate stuff. It's like being a mom and all your other mom friends. And what do you do because your kids are you know, making you pull out your hair and they, you know, some days they suck. They're amazing blessings, but you know what? There are hard days. And a lot of these days are when most of us moms drink. So kudos to the stay-at-home moms that are exclusively stay-at-home moms. I'm not working for anybody else besides two little, ta two little children that need me 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I don't get to go home at the end of the day because I am home with them. I put them to bed and I still worry about them constantly. So maybe I don't relate to you in the corporate field, but I can relate to the stress and just it pulls on you. I'm not just a mom. I have been a stay-at-home mom for a while, but I'm also a real estate agent. And let me tell you, when times get tough, it really gets tough and stressful. And there have been many transactions where I'm like, oh my gosh, I just need to drink the bottle of tequila to get me through this. I actually function so much better and do a lot better job not drinking and not being involved in all the, let's go out for happy hour, let's go get a drink. This career is revolved around alcohol, kind of like yours. And I think you just have to be the bigger person and start making the trend towards being the sober one. Also being the face of the YouTube channel, that comes with its own stresses. I need to make sure that I'm constantly on top of being there for everybody and I feel bad when I drop the ball and that that's a stress itself. There's a lot of time and effort that goes on behind the scenes of this camera and thankfully I have my husband that helps me with so much of this channel. I do three jobs pretty much. Mom life, realtor life, and YouTube life, which is not just a hobby. It's been absolutely inspiring how many people that I have seen quit drinking because of this channel and the community that has been built. I'm here to help people. That also is what I've always loved to do is help people. So that is what this channel is here for. And it is absolutely amazing how much this community 
is here for each other. I'd rather have a YouTube channel that changes people's lives and helps people's lives than have a reel that goes viral that doesn't do anything for anybody. Why does certain careers have to be revolved around alcohol? I had somebody tell me they wanted to quit drinking, but they couldn't. They, had, they wanted to order non-alcoholic wine because they host so many things because of their career and they didn't want to be questioned. But why? Why go to that extreme? Why not just quit drinking? Maybe you'd influence a whole other group of people to quit drinking and realize that you can get together and host events and have business meetings without the alcohol and hitting other goals. And maybe you can actually be more successful in your business if your life wasn't revolved around happy hour and having people over for drinking. This is Zoe, she is our anxiety filled dog. So she would never be a good emotional support animal. At what point do you feel the need for alcohol completely or almost forget about it? I've learned that it destroyed so much of my life and I never want to rely on that again ever. It has destroyed so many pieces of my life, other people's lives, and it just, so realizing it after I stopped drinking, that's where I was like, I don't need this in my life anymore. The need for alcohol isn't there anymore. I did live and breathe needing alcohol, is what I thought. But forgetting it, it's a whole different question. I mean, I will never forget how much it destroyed, how many friendships it destroyed, what it's done to families, what it's done for you know my potential careers, and everybody around me, how much it's destroyed. I can't forget about it. Having the need for alcohol is no longer there, but you know, it was there for such a long time. I thought that I needed it. You might think that you need it. We do not need it. We do not need the poison destructing our body, our lives. It's literally destroying so many pieces of your life that you have no idea about until you quit drinking and realize that you didn't actually have a need to drink. It's literally shoved down your throat so far. Everywhere you look, left and right, it's everywhere. I don't think anybody can forget about alcohol, but maybe almost forgetting it, no, because you always are going to be like, gosh, man, I'm glad I'm not, I'm not in that boat anymore. I'm glad I feel so much better. I don't see the need for alcohol in my life anymore. I don't have a need for it. I did six months ago. I thought that I needed it every day to get through life, but I did not. Forgetting it is something that is completely different. It's going to be hard to forget about something that has destroyed your life for so many years and always referencing back like, gosh, I feel so much better. Man, remember that one time? <laughs> Jeez. It's just gonna be something that's hard to forget. This question is from somebody that quit drinking in 2022, which congrats to you. That is absolutely huge. Maybe we should be asking you some of these questions. I'm still trying to figure out things to do to cure that alcohol void. I can relate with you on this in so many ways that void it's, it's a weird feeling and a lot of us don't know what that feeling feels like unless we've actually stopped drinking. And one thing that I'd done is I separated myself from people that I didn't think would be a good influence for me. I got outside, I hiked, I found new hobbies. I'm you know still trying to figure out the winter hobbies because I absolutely hate being cold. So you will not find me doing hard things in outside weather in winter. So I started a YouTube channel and it has helped me tremendously fill that void. Cause I was thinking about this the other day. A lot of people ask that question, like, what do you do? Like, what is your hobby? Well, prior to six months, drinking was my hobby, but now um, being a part of this community is keeping me going. It's helping me, it's helping you. It's, it's filling that void that everybody I think asks about is just replacing like something so amazing in life. Filling that alcohol void is probably going to take years because we have used alcohol as a habit for decades and that's the only thing we knew, which is sad because there is life outside of alcohol. Believe it or not, some of us, some people think that we are boring, but you know what, I think I was boring when I was passed out drunk on my patio while everybody else was awake having fun. That's boring. That void, it, it's just, it's a kind of a funny feeling. It, it's really, truly a weird feeling. And 
I'm sorry that you're experiencing this. I can relate to you because I feel like I'm still, I'm not accepted in sober groups or drinking groups. I'm kind of just like this middle person and nobody wants to accept me yet. I don't know. It's kind of a really weird feeling. So let's continue working on this together. Some of the most important things that I do to try to fill that void is I've been going to movies a lot, hanging out with my kids more. We got puzzles and games, been doing that more. I got back into training people because I'm a personal trainer, been making sure that I'm more consistent with my workouts, working or like getting more creative with food, making different snacks, finding different like beverages to drink, getting outside, enjoying like the nice weather when it's here, especially during spring and summer, just getting outside, going on hikes, just enjoying, you know, actually being more present with my family now versus when I was drinking, I was not present. I wasn't doing any of these things, but between all of that in YouTube and real estate and just mom life, I think a lot of those fill the void, but I try to stay away from people that I absolutely cannot stand when they're drunk. I fill the void with drinking like sparkling waters. It's a huge, huge fill in for me. And this is sparkling hop water, absolutely zero alcohol. It actually has things in it to help you distress and unwind and boost your mood, which hello, alcohol was supposed to do that, right? But it never ever did. It actually destroyed your mood more than you ever could imagine. All right, next question. This question can answer quite a few of the other comments slash questions that I got. You just hit the six month mark in your sobriety. Congratulations. Where are you mentally and health wise? Six months into sobriety, what changes have you noticed in your well-being as the months have passed? And what is your motivation as you continue down the path of sobriety? Obviously, six months is, you know, it's a long time for some of us. And some people may think, well, girl, you still got ways to go. As a lot of you know, six months was my big goal and I hit it because I heard that it comes with a lot more mental clarity, restoring your brain, but I've noticed that I'm clear-minded, yes. I've also dropped about 15 to 20 pounds. I, my skin is clearer, my hair is a little better, my nails are definitely better, and just like this, my sense of well-being, like just my sense of self-worth is way different now. Since I quit drinking, I realized that I don't need something to make me feel like I'm a part of something, if that makes sense at all. But I'm myself and I fit in wherever I'm going to fit in now. And I don't need social, I've realized through this that I don't need certain people in my life. And I used to be kind of a butthole when I would drink and a lot of that would come out when I was drunk and I wouldn't be confrontational. Well, a couple months ago, I think I was telling my mother-in-law, I was like, I think that I like that drunk confrontation has actually like now it's becoming sober. Like I can actually be confrontational when I'm sober. And it's, that's really hard for me to be confrontational. I will stand up for myself more now and in a more tactful way because I'm not sloppy drunk, which, you know, it helps you stand your ground and be who you are. And like, I'm that real person. My skin is better, sleep is improving. I still, you know, go up and down with sleep, but I'm not having to take trazodone anymore to sleep. And obviously not using alcohol to fall asleep and sleep good, right? I, my nails are better. I'm more aware of my surroundings. I feel more present. I actually am learning how to cope with my emotions versus just masking them, which comes with that like mental part of being sober. I think, you know, a lot of us do have natural anxiety and depression. And so my anxiety is different now that I quit drinking. I still definitely have some doom and gloom anxiety, you know, letting my husband drive on the freeway with my children, that anxiety is still there. I mean, certain things are still there, but mental clarity is there. I can focus a little bit more. I get, I just have like more energy to get stuff done. I can go camping. I can go on tr trips and come home and get my crap done. I'm not hung over, which like the progress of, you know, finishing things is definitely a huge thing. 
boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. I don't have to do that and I'm not going to do it. Like, so finding my voice, a sober voice, I think is what I needed to do versus letting everybody walk all over me, take advantage of me. I don't let people take advantage of me like they used to be able to take advantage of me. And I have a voice. I have a backbone now. And ye yesterday I was kind of thinking about this. People like to see me fail. And I think being sober for the last six months, I've realized a lot, like a lot of so-called friends have been jealous of accomplishments. And, you know, so seeing me wasted and that horrible side of me, it was like, oh, Megan ain't perfect, is she? I've never claimed to be perfect, but I'm sober now. So I don't really have a place in anybody's life, I feel like, because they're still watching, waiting for me to fail and finding something about me that they don't like. That's still a struggle for me. Where do you find true friends? And that I think has been a big eye opener for me through the last six months. I've encouraged friends to quit drinking, which feels absolutely amazing. And I've encouraged some family to quit drinking and a lot of you, that's super inspiring. It helps me be stronger mentally and keeps me going on this path of sobriety. I want to keep going. I have no need, no want, no desire to drink. I know that a lot of us fail in the first year of sobriety and I am not going to be one that fails. I will not let people be like, ha ha. I'm, that is my motivation right there to keep me going. Just like I did a video before on the dark energy, I'm taking that energy, I'm taking all of you guys with me on this sober journey and we are going to succeed. I am planning an event, a shower, where I feel I need to serve alcohol because people would be expecting alcohol. Have you had to do or would you do this type of thing? Any advice? No, I wouldn't. I would not serve alcohol. I would stand my ground. Boundaries are super key to your success and everybody should respect that. I don't know what type of shower it is, bridal shower. I mean, you can serve fancy drinks. I went to a Christmas party and we had big mason jars filled with sparkling water that had berries in one and lemon in another. And you know, you can make fancy drinks. They don't have to have freaking alcohol in it. If people don't like it, then so be it, right? I mean, it's your hosting. You don't need to buy their freaking alcohol. You don't need to deal with their drunk personalities, you do you. And if they come, they come and that's cool. But stand your ground. I personally have put my foot down and said, I don't want certain alcohols in my house. People catch on, people start respecting you. That is a boundary that you must keep very strong if you do not want to be around it. And if you do not want to supply it, don't. Friends and family should respect that you don't want to be around alcohol. They should support your journey. And you know what? If they can't respect it, then I think you should probably find new friends. This is a good one. I would say our attitude when we quit drinking, that can be a question. I've seen a lot of bad attitudes, ex-alcoholics against drinkers, some even social drinkers. I don't know if I'm saying it right, like coming on too strong. Okay, I completely understand what you're saying. It's like shaming the drinkers when you are sober now and thinking that you're better than them. Well, through my journey, I've just like stayed in my own little bubble and if they wanna continue drinking, like that's on them. I don't sit there and thump it like you need to quit drinking, you need to quit drinking because I did. I mean, I think a lot of these like newly sober people might have to do that to make themselves feel better and like, so they can stay strong. How annoying is it like, hey, you drank for 20 years, but now you're sober, so you're gonna shove it down my throat that I need to be sober? No, you can't change, like these types of attitudes need to realize that people change on their own time. They will eventually follow suit if that's what is meant to be, but having bad attitudes and like just judging, ugh, that is so annoying. I am I am guilty of judging people, but it's not necessarily judging. It was frustrated with knowing that their life could be so much better without the alcohol and like why can't they give it up or why can't they at least cut back? Or I've seen how it affects 
like their whole entire family and what it's ruining. I don't sit there and tell them you should quit drinking. Oh my gosh, you have to quit drinking. Eventually they're going to figure it out. And that is amazing. But forcing change, forcing those bad attitudes is not going to make anybody change. So I'm hoping like some of these newly sober people or the ones that, you know, are sober, just like let them figure it out. Don't sit there and be cruel to them. It's not going to get anybody anywhere. And then these people that are still drinking are going to look at sober people bad. So people are going to look at drunk people bad. It's going to just divide people. We don't want division with, with people. Why cause division between drunks and sober people? We all got a problem. Maybe some of us had a problem. We're sober now. And maybe these drinking people want to get sober. But if we're attacking each other, nobody's going to help anybody when really we just need to be one big force and help people keep helping other people. Where are you at on your journey? How have you been feeling lately? Are you working through new challenges at this point in your sobriety? I think this is a good question. How many of you are having challenges right now? And where are some of you at on your journeys? I would love to hear those in the comments because I think a lot of us can relate to having the same challenges. Like, is it for me, it would be, where do I fit in now? Like, uh, am I still part of the drinking crowd or am I part of the sober crowd? Like, where, where's, where am I? Where do I fit in now? And during my journey, it's been a lot of, well, I don't fit in anywhere. And that's, that's the lonely feeling. Being six months sober and trugging along, just going, 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 feeling absolutely amazing. Yes, I navigate my challenges. I do have challenges. It is, I think, just life in general. Um, but now I'm facing these lonely feelings or I don't fit in anywhere feelings. I'm, I have to face them sober now. So I guess that's kind of challenging. Like, is my anxiety ever going to get better? That's one question I'm wondering, is my depression ever gonna get better? I don't know. The anxiety of this world and being a mom, I think there's just always gonna be anxiety. Where am I at on my journey? Six months, sober, stone cold sober, loving it. I'm loving all the new uh, like mocktails that I drink now and just, being with my family more. There's lots of challenges, but I think that's just daily challenges. Um, I've been to breweries several times now, not an issue at all. I guess facing the issues or facing the challenges of what's gonna happen in March and April when all the birthdays are here, all the celebrations, spring break, I guess just navigating all of that. I never thought I would be here. Six months was my biggest goal since I dedicated a sober life and challenges are here and there. I mean, I think just the daily grind of anxiety is gonna be constant. I don't know how to navigate the constant feeling of some of the anxiety, but it is a different type of anxiety now. Um, so I guess that would be one of my biggest challenges. And another one would be, where do I fit in? Do I fit in with the drinking buddies or the sober people? And, you know, I'm still, I still feel like an outcast, regardless of being sober or drunk. And that is a huge challenge in itself because having children and not knowing if you should talk to this mom or that mom or any of the moms because do you fit in with them? Because, well, when I was drinking, like they looked at me weird, but now that I'm sober, I feel like they still look at me weird. So I guess navigating the challenge of how people view you now because you're not cool anymore, right? Just letting go of what people think of you is the next step that I have to face and doing it sober and I'm going to conquer it. Thank you guys for being here, for supporting me, for keeping me motivated to help you guys help others and grow this community. It's been absolutely amazing being here with you guys and all of us together. I hope that it was helpful for a lot of you and I hope that we can keep inspiring each other and engaging with each other.